We'll begin this demonstration by opening the file labeled urjlk.dxp. When we click open, this dialog is presented because the Spotfire analysis document is linked to a source file. Since the data source is found in the same directory as the analysis, we can simply click OK. The scatter plot presented in this analysis is based on data from the World Bank collected in 2006. We are analyzing this data because my product should be marketed to countries with high internet and high mobile cell phone usage. In this scatter plot, each marker represents one of 183 countries, and the position of each marker reflects the magnitude of mobile cellular subscriptions and internet users in that country. The green lines are set at a threshold of 75 out of 100 people, and the dashed red lines are set at a threshold of 50 out of 100 people. Our goal is to create a new column which allows us to use these threshold lines to identify high and medium potential for sales of my product. We will then use this new column to color and count the countries in these new categories. Our first step will be to view the tag panel and use the menu bar within that panel to create a new tag collection. We'll name the collection Potential for My Product Sales and type a description. Then we will create two new tags. One will be labeled high and the other will be labeled medium. When we click OK, the new tag collection shows zero values next to each tag, leaving 183 rows assigned to the untagged group. We want the countries identified by the boundary defined by the green threshold lines to represent high potential for my product sales. So we mark that data, select the high tag, and use this icon to attach tag to marked rows. Then we will mark the countries identified by the boundary defined by the dashed red threshold lines, select the medium tag, and attach that tag to those marked rows. We can return to the scatter plot, click where there is nothing to clear the marked data, and scroll to the bottom of the filters panel in order to view the filter associated with the column associated with our tag collection. We can use this just like any other categorical data column in our data table. For example, we could drag and drop this filter on the color by target in order to color markers in the scatter plot. Or we could decide that we need to count the number of countries in each grouping. So we insert a new bar chart and note that row count is selected by default on the value axis and our new tag collection is selected by default for the category axis. This is exactly what we wanted. However, we might want to drag and drop on the color by target of this visualization in order to match the coloring in the scatter plot and enter the properties dialog in order to add labels to the top of each bar, which show the number of countries in each category. We might even filter away the untagged values and just as easily return them to the visualizations. After creating tags, we may wish to save this analysis as a different file name. You should take note of the fact that this analysis will be saved linked to the original data source. Let's name the file My Product Analysis 2006. Click Save and close the file. When we reopen that file, all data is untagged. This default behavior is due to the fact that the data in your source may have changed and consequently your original tag assignments would no longer be valid. If we want tag assignments to persist in this scenario, we will need to take an additional step. First, let's reassign the tags as we did before. And click where there is nothing to clear marked data. Then we will initiate that additional step by going to Edit Data Table Properties. Here is the section of the dialog which allows us to define a key column for linked data. When we click on the Edit button, we can select Country as this key column. When we click OK and click OK, the tag assignments are now associated with the country value. So if we save this analysis to the same name and location, close the file, and reopen, this time the tags are saved. Note, however, that if the data has changed, the position of markers in the scatter plot may no longer match your intention with the tags. For example, if we go to File, Replace Data Table, replace the existing data table with a new data table, and browse to the World Bank data for 2012, we can click Open, confirm that the data structure is the same as the World Bank data for 2006 by clicking OK and clicking OK. 
Notice that the tag assignments from 2006 remain. Therefore, we should rename the tag collection accordingly by clicking on the Edit icon. Then we will create a new tag collection for the 2012 data where we can capture the high and medium countries based on the new position of markers relative to our threshold values. We will then use this new column through a series of drag and drop actions to adjust the properties of both the scatter plot and bar chart to reflect the 2012 data. Finally, you should note that in addition to using the new column of data to adjust visualization properties and filters, you can also use the tag panel structure to select a specific tag like the high potential for my product sales in 2006 and right mouse click to mark that data in the active visualization.